All right, good morning once again, everyone. My name is Sharita Bennett. I'm the Life Enrichment Program Coordinator at the Dorothy Benson Multipurpose Complex with Fulton County Department of Senior Services. Once again, welcome back to Basic Computer Week 6. This is a review, so if it's your first time in here, um, still welcome. Um, you can watch all the videos that I have done on on um, YouTube, you'll put in Fulton County Senior Services and you'll um, see our page there. I'm not sure why I'm hearing you, but can you mute? Let me see if it will let me mute you. Okay, there we go. All right, so we're going to do a bit of a review today, like I said, and then what I'll do is take any questions you may have. So if it's something that I didn't go over and you probably um, want me to just point out, just let me know, okay? So let's go ahead and dive into the presentation. So if you recalled from week one, week one, we talked about very basic, one of the very basic things and that's how to get into your browser, okay? So I have what is an um, ICT and that is information and communication technology. So your basic I ICT that we have nowadays, of course, um, communication technologies are the internet, as you can see, cell phone, etc. The internet allows us to communicate via email, social network like Facebook and search engines. Okay. Um, so the first week, like I said, we just learn how to use our browser, and um, Sorry for my grammar check right there, but we're gonna do the step just like we did in the first week. So if you're new and this is your first week, I'm gonna kind of go over back very, very quickly to show you um, the things that we've learned, all right? So remember, you should be seeing my screen right now. So remember with browsers, browsers, hope everyone is, browsers, there's a couple that a lot of people use. Um, and so the main one I think everyone uses nowadays, Google Chrome, okay? So you have Google Chrome, you have um, Firefox, Mozilla, um, or Internet Explorer, okay? So the main one that I use is Google Chrome. So you would locate Google Chrome on your desktop. You would double click by using your mouse, okay? Double click using your mouse. I'm in a class. Sorry about that. Double click using your mouse. And of course, you would um, type in anything that you um, are looking for. So you see, Google already came up simply because I've been on here many times. But in the first week, I showed you how, for instance, you get to Fulton County. So when you open your browser, this right here, this bar right here is called your um, search bar, okay? Your search bar. So what you're gonna do is type in Fulton County. You see mine already comes up because I've been on it many times. So Fulton County GA.gov. You put that in and the website comes up, okay? The website comes up. And of course, once you go on our website, you have to kind of maneuver through the website to find what you're looking for. Most websites, as you know, have their own search bar. So if you're looking for something specific, you can all you can always find it on the search bar. Okay. So for instance, on Fulton County government, like we did in the first week. You will search anything you want to look for right here, and you would um, type it in in this search box. So we have coronavirus updates. So if you're trying to see that, you will type whatever you want in, okay? And then of course you hit enter, and it will show you your results for all the things pertaining to the topic you typed in. Now, also from our um, first week review, what we also um, did. 
or I pointed out to you guys is how would you choose um, the results that you get for looking something, looking up something specific? So that's where we learn about opening a new tab, okay? So when you go and open a new tab, you will always see a plus sign. Doesn't matter what kind of computer you have or if you're using um, a device like an iPad or an Android tablet, you would always see at the top a plus sign and that means you're adding a tab. So you're adding a tab, okay? So you will click on that and see it opens a new tab. So the one we were just on is still open, but now we're on a new tab, okay? So now, again, let's type in Google, even though it's right there at the bottom. So we'll type in Google, right? I remember the example I used from the first week was that, say you're looking for Kroger that's near you. So you type in Kroger in your search bar. Miss Lynette, I hope I'm going um, at a good pace for you because I, I see you're taking notes, okay. All right, so um, you put in Kroger near me, right? And all you do is hit your enter on your keyboard, okay? All you do is hit enter. If you were here in the first week of class, I told you that the most important things are on the first page. I normally never go past the first page because everything that you need is normally on there. So because we've already been here from the first week, you see that this is already highlighted in purple. This means that you've been on that site before. So the top three is your best results. The top three when you start something, in my opinion, is your best results, okay? So this takes you straight to Kroger website. You click on that. And once it opens, I'm taking a bit of a time, all right? As you can see, guys, it brings that up. And right here, you put in your zip code, city, state, whatever that may be. Sometimes, of course, it picks up your location, so it automatically brings up the Kroger's that are near you anyway, all right? Okay, another thing that we learned from the first week of class is how you would close out these different tabs, okay? So remember, I pointed out to you at the top here what each of these mean. So you have this where it basically um, would minimize your browsers to your task tab. So this, I'll say, call, you call that dash. A dash, you see, it takes away, it takes it away. And so it's open, but it's on your taskbar. If you want to go back to that, and I know mine may look a little bit um, different from you guys, but it doesn't matter what system you're using, whether it's Windows 10 or 7, the same thing with task, taskbar, which we're gonna get to, it will be down here. So all you have to do is click back on that. You see, I have more than one thing open. So I'll go back to where we were, okay? This, the double boxes, remember double boxes, which is the second thing right here. Double boxes means minimize or maximize, okay? So if you see, I just click that. When you see a, a single box, that means you have minimized your um, screen, okay? You've minimized your screen. Versus once you hit and you see a double box, that means you have maximized, maximized, all right? And then last, lastly, the X means you completely close out all of your browsers. So right now we have two browsers open. One, two. We want to completely close out, completely close out. All you do is hit your X and now we're back to our desktop, okay? So like I always say each week, this is something you have to um, practice with, opening new tabs, typing in new in um, different search engines.
because you can also do that if you don't like using Google Chrome, you can use Internet Explorer or Firefox. Okay. All right, let's go back to our PowerPoint here with our review. So next thing, second week, we learned about creating an email account. All right. So as you can see here, um, same thing I told you in second week, just gave you a little bit of history about email and how far it came from. Um, and it's, of course, it's come a very long way and who it was developed by and what year. And I just put on here um, some of the most popular email addresses or email accounts, excuse me, that people use now. So you have Gmail, Yahoo, AOL, which I have. And of course I have my county um, email and I have a Gmail, okay? So I showed you how to create an email account, okay? So I'm, I'm gonna take you part of the way, I know most people have email addresses now because like we've learned, that's one of the basic things when it comes to basic computer, you have to have an email address, you have to, all right? So we're gonna do the same thing. Now let me minimize my PowerPoint here. So. Let's say we wanna create a Gmail account. So once again, if you remember from week two, we created our account, we go to Google Chrome. Double click on your Google Chrome. Double click on your Google Chrome. And so you're wanting to create a Gmail account. You would type in Gmail, remember, in that web website browser part search box. You type in Gmail, dot com hit enter now this is taking us remember i said maximize now if you're creating an account if you don't already have a gmail or whatever account you decide that you want to create you will go down here to create account Okay, if you want to create a Yahoo or AOL, you will do the same thing. You will type in that particular website. So you type in AOL.com or Yahoo.com. Okay, and I know a lot of people still use Hotmail. So you will type in Hotmail.com if you want to use that one. All right, so you will go and create account. And let's see, you always click for myself. And like I said, I'm not going to go all the way through through this because it is a review, um, but you will put in all of those things they're asking you for. So your first name, last name, if you are here in week two, we, we created, um, or, or, or a fake person, Phoebe Gaxby, and we created an email for her, okay? So you put in your first name, your last name, and then um, normally what would happen and let me just put in something real quick. Hopefully it populates and do what I wanted to do. All right, so let me put this in. All right, so if you were here in week two, you see how I put in Greg Scott, and so your username, I put in the same thing, just put your name together, gregscott at gmail.com. Now, if you remember from week two, Phoebe Gaxby by itself was not available. If Greg Scott wasn't available, they would put suggestions right here, right down here, and it would say like maybe Greg Scott one, Greg Scott two would have some numbers um, they would suggest to you. You can do that or just try to um, switch it around and recreate it. Of course, put in your password and then follow the necessary steps. Guys, it's very, very, very easy, okay? All right, let's come out of this. All right, now when we created our email, one second. When we created our email, we also learned how to attach a document to our email to send off, okay? So I want to show you that. So here we go. Hopefully, let me go back out. So we're going to use our thing that we created. Let's 
see if it will bring up. If not, I use my um. I'll show you guys my using my comment email. And we did B O N. Let me see. Okay, you're not for time's sake. We're gonna use since I already have this open. I sent this to myself. All right. So I'm gonna use my regular email as an example, just for the sake of time. All right. So if you see here, I have my um, email open, right? So if you remember from um, week two, how we save documents. And so I have this Word document that's on my desktop. So in your email, whenever you are sending a new message, new message, as you can see here on ours, you have that at the top. On the Gmail, it um, you normally see new message or compose, and compose means new message. So you click on that if you have a um, Gmail. Different um, different email accounts, different things, but it means the same. All right, so you click on new message. Now, this is a bit uh, different um, from the regular um, email if I was in the Gmail um, account, but it's kind of the same, same thing. This has the word all the way out attachments, but say for instance, you were using Gmail, all you would see is just this pin um, right here, like the paper clip. That's all you'd see. When you see a paper clip, that means attachment. Okay. So you will click on attachments. And mine's a bit um, different, but you hit on choose file. And remember, we have a Phoebe Gaxby file that we had saved from week two. And we saved it on the desktop. Okay. So remember, I pointed out um, to you guys. Um, in week two, when you save stuff, depending on where you save it, that's where you'd have to go back and find your document. So it's in desktop. So I would click on desktop and all I do is look for my file name. Since I know it's on my desktop, I see it there, but when I go into my documents, I have to locate that. So all you do is click on your document, hit open, you attach it. And like I said, this, this um, email, it requires a lot more steps. Yours wouldn't look like this per se, but it's the same um, steps. All right, I'll hit done. And then to confirm, to confirm guys that your attachment is there, look beside your paper clip, or like I said, some emails have the word fully typed out and you make sure that document is attached, which we have Phoebe Gaxby attached right here. All right. Okay, guys. So let me minimize that and let's move on to week three. I have to run through. We have a couple minutes here. All right, guys. So I just kind of um, went over this. All right, wait, Miss Lynette, let me unmute you. Go ahead. Oh, sorry, I was repeating what you say. Oh, I have okay, I thought you was asking a question. I do, I do have a question. Okay, go ahead. Um, I'm just learning how to actually go into G, to, to um, email, but okay. um, most, most of the teachers want you to send out your email to them. Mm -hmm. and. Um, one of my classes, I've sent out maybe 10 because my my account I set up, it looks like it just kept saying it failed. So I think she maybe have like maybe 20 that I'm still trying to figure out. That's why I jumped in this class this morning. Okay. And I'm hoping that I've done it right because it keeps saying um, what I wrote to ask her for homework, Spanish <laughs> homework. Yes. It just kept saying fail and I don't know what I did. Um, I'm learning. My daughter got a tablet for me and literally I'm a beginner. Yes. The concept on the, on the cell phone, but now with a tablet, it's a I'm bit different. What, what I'm doing wrong because it's all new. So yeah. I'm, I'm 
So, so I, I apologize I didn't get in earlier, but I'm no. learning, like I said, step by step, yes. how to actually send out my information that she asked me for. for. To get I think what it sounds like to me is that if it's saying that it's failed, that probably means that you're probably typing in her email address wrong. Because if it keeps on bouncing back to you saying that it's fail, that's that's the main reason I could think of why it would do that. And if you're talking about Maria, what we'll do? Um, yes. yes. <laughs> um, what I what I'll do? I got maybe twenty over the weekend because I was still trying to learn how to and send to it. Her, and I no. just I fail. Yes. So what what I'll do um, before we wrap up a bit, I'll get your email address and let's prep. I'm going to have you send me something and let's see if that works. Because then, like I said, if it failed, if it failed, the main reason is probably you're putting in her email address wrong. OK. But I'll get I'll get your information at the end and we'll 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 um, talk a, a bit further. OK. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, I'll mute in. All right, guys, I apologize for that. So like I was saying, um, we just went over attachment and saving your documents. And saving your documents. So let's get out of this. All right. So just again, remember, um, like I pointed out in um, week two, one of the most used things on a computer, and that's if you have Microsoft Office, is Microsoft Word. And so with saving a Microsoft document, of course, you have to create something in Word. So let me just show you that real quick. Okay. All right, so when you go into your Microsoft document, you would see a new blank document, which you want to click on that. Now, I'm just going to type something random. I'm going to type Fulton County here. And say we want to save this document. And again, we're going to save it to our desktop, okay? That's the location of where your document will be saved, all right? So you always want to locate file. You locate your file. Locate your file. And you always want to hit save as, OK? Save as allow you to create a name that you're going to remember and that you can easily find once you've saved it, OK? So you see it already has desktop on here is because I've saved my last document, one when I demonstrated to you guys, I saved it on desktop. So I'm going to click my desktop, okay, and see it says Fulton County. If you realize, these are the th two things that we've saved before are also there, okay? And these are on your desktop. That means when you open up your computer, it's right there on the desktop. Your desktop is the main screen that has everything. So all you do is hit save. It normally goes back to your document. And remember, what does this mean? Your dash means to minimize to your taskbar. That's the best way um, I would suggest you remember that. It minimize to your taskbar. So once you hit that, you see that right there? Fulton County, not sure. It's kind of showing a bit uh, faded. I think it did it twice. But see, right here, our document is here. So I suggest, um, yes, you can practice putting it in different files, like you have documents on there if you want to save a picture. It has a picture folder as well. But to just practice and know how where you're saving a file, if you're using Microsoft Office, then I'll suggest you start off by saving it to your desktop so you can easily locate it, OK? You can easily locate it. All right, let's see here. All right, so the last thing I'm going to go over is just main keys on your um, keyboard, OK? Main keys on, on your keyboard. Main keys on your keyboard. 
and then we get that. All right, guys. So quickly, as you remember, so this was uh, week four, and I'm kind of grouping it and shifting into each. I'm probably going a little bit faster than actual PowerPoint, but it was this point, so I can't remember. <laughs> so um, with the keyboard, uh, remember I pointed out certain keys that you'll probably um, like to know. Now, if you're using a device such as an iPad or a tablet, it's a bit different on there. But if you have, um, I know on those devices, you can um, have the option of bringing up a keyboard on it, but I know most of the time you're just touching it. So this is mainly if you're at a desktop or you're, or you're using a laptop, okay? So some of the, the main keys, and we're gonna go back um, into our Microsoft Office so I can show you these examples that I'm talking about. All right, so our main, our main keys that I had pointed out and how to use them. The first one was cap locks. So cap lock means exactly what it, you think it means. Caps, meaning put everything in caps for you, okay? So your caps, you have two normally, on your keyboard. All right, so one is located, which that's the main one everybody use, is on your left-hand side, right um, on top of your shift key, all right? Right on top of your shift key. So when you hit caps, it will normally have a light that reflects showing, okay, you it's all caps. Sometimes you will see it on your screen, it says um, caps is on. And as you can see, if I go ahead and type Fulton County, you see everything will be in caps, okay? All right, so that's that key. Then we have our shift key. So our shift key also, exactly what it means, it's shift. All right, I just got my 10 minute warning, guys. All right, so we got our shift key and exactly what it means that's like with a car shift the next gear so your shift key does kind of the same thing all right so your shift key say for instance um you want to make something capital without using the caps and it's just one letter you want to make capital you have to hold your shift key hold your shift key and then press on whatever letter that you're doing so i'm still holding my shift key right so you see that it still makes everything capital, but you have to keep holding the key. It makes everything capital. Now, if I'm just trying to make one letter capital, you will hold your shift. All right, stop holding your shift and then continue typing. Hold your shift again. All right. Okay, another thing I showed you was the backspace, the backspace key. All right, so I'm gonna go back here. All right, so with your, with your backspace, it is normally on the right-hand side, and let me, let's reference back to our PowerPoint. And I'm gonna move it over here. I probably should have made a whole slide with it with this, but if you see your backspace is right here. This is a, Some of them have on the word backspace on it. Some keyboard doesn't. It just has the arrow going that way, okay? And the arrow means backspace, all right? So with backspace, exactly what it, what it means. You're going backwards, okay? And that means deleting something, all right? So for instance, Say I typed my name in all caps and I want to delete it. You can hit backspace, keep on hitting backspace, like take your finger off it. Or if you continue and just hold on backspace, it would delete everything, okay? These are keys you have to practice with and I suggest you practice in Word with these, okay? All right, say we wanna completely delete something. We want to completely delete something. Now, with your delete button, let's bring this back up. 
there's um, typically two. Now this keyboard is um, a bit different. So as you can see, which most keyboards have. So up top here, you have a delete key, right? On the top right here. Then normally some keyboards right in this area right here, it would have another delete key. All right, but this um, keyboard doesn't. So with the delete key, exactly what it means, it delete things, all right? So I want you to locate delete, okay? If you locate delete on your keyboard, I remember it's slightly, slightly, okay? Like, like your backspace, okay? So once you locate that um, delete key, all you'd have to do, and this is two, two, what did I say, two steps. All right, so remember I showed you when you delete something, we wanna go to our left. And what we're, this is called highlight, so I'm highlighting this. So, this. So our second key that is involved, oh, sorry about that, guys. The second key that is involved in this, so we're going to use our delete key. The second key that's involved in this, if you're using a desktop and you have your mouse, you have your mouse. I don't have, I'm not using the mouse today. I'm just using the mouse that's on the laptop. Not using the mouse today, but if you did, you remember you hold on that left key, the left key, okay, on your mouse and drag it backwards. And since I have it right here, I don't want to use it today because using the other one is much faster. But on that left key, if you're using a mouse, your left key, we would hold. All right, see it highlights it and all you're doing is hitting delete and it takes it away. All right. All right, the last thing I, I wanted to show you our review, excuse me. Um, remember how we copied and paste something? Okay, so we're gonna go back in our Google Chrome and let me type in, we're gonna go to Google real quick. All right, I'm gonna go through this pretty, pretty fast. I only have four minutes left. All right, let's just type in Kroger. All right, so let's say I wanna copy and paste something. So if you remember from our copy and paste, we're gonna be doing the same thing. You'll be highlighting, highlighting, remember using that left, your left clicker. And all you do is hold on that left click and say, I just wanna highlight this part. And once again, remember, I suggest you practice, practice, practice using your mouse. That's the best way you're gonna learn how to do these things, okay? That's the way I learned, all right? The next step in this, we're moving to our right clicker. Remember, you right click, we're going to our copy and paste, sorry, I just let that go. You right click, and remember, all you're looking for, you don't pay attention to anything else, all you're looking for is that copy key. So our next step we're going for is our copy and paste. All right, so you left click on copy. Remember, we're minimizing, minimizing to the taskbar again, and we're back into our Word. I didn't minimize Word, so hence why it's still up. All right, remember once you get in your Word, or even if you're in a browser, and you want to copy and paste something, it's the same thing. Practice, 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 okay? You would right click. So you would right click, right click. And all you're looking for is paste. So normally there's three paste options that comes up if you can see right here. And you see paste, keep source formatting, merge, or keep text only. I want you to choose keep force um, source formatting. And exactly what we just highlighted is now um, paste in our Word document. Okay, 
this is something you have to play around with when I first learned how to first learn how to use Word. That's exactly um, how I learned. We they had us playing in um, Word. Well, perf um, I'll take that back. It was Notepad. Yes, and that's slightly different. All right. So that was the last thing. And let's see here. Oh, guys, I, I apologize for this. We have one minute left. One minute, 40 seconds. I'm going to show you real quick. If you were here last week, I showed you guys all the bookmark, which some people already knew. If I think Miss Mimi is still in here. She already knew her, uh, know how to do this. So real quick, to bookmark something, if you put in, okay, I I got you, Miss Lynette. All right, last thing with bookmarks, guys. Remember with bookmarks, once you type in that website, all you got to do is locate this star. You click on the star. And it'll say bookmark. All you do is hit done. And as you can see, now my bookmark is right here meaning it won't be hard to find that website, okay? It's normally right underneath the search bar. All right, guys. Now, remember, I'm going to use this last minute just to say thank you guys so much. Um, these last six weeks has been great. Um, it's something we had to get used to as far as virtual programming, but I think it went over very well. Thank you guys for joining me. Um, I hope you learned something. And um, I hope you to see in my other class. I have one on Wednesday, intro to iPhones and iPads. Thank you once again on behalf of Fulton County Senior Services. All right, remember to check out our YouTube page for classes that's been recorded live or also recorded previously. All right, thank you guys so much. Yeah.